Hi, I'm Yvette Rowland from Liam Galvin's YouTube channel. In this clip we see Dave Courtney and Seymour talking about the trouble that they got into in Tenerife. Enjoy. If I tell a story it sounds like I'm, I'm being too... No, don't, get a load don't of me. No. No. So it's your story. Um, Ten over to you Seymour. Who? Over to me. Over to you. I was in Tenerife and um, Dave was doing an audience with out there. And uh, we was in a bar called Lineker's Bar and um, some fellas were talking to us. They come from Cornwall. Was it Cornwall? Yeah. English, so, English big white English skinnings. Proper fucking steroid gangbangers, you know what I mean? So anyway, we talked to anyone, so we was talking to them, having a laugh and that. And we left there, went to Bobby's Bar and we was chilling out there and they arrived. Didn't think nothing of it, carried on drinking, talking to everyone. And um, while they was in there, a Moroccan guy come in, proper like a steroid eater himself. One of them went over to him and a big fight broke out in there. Um, they kicked him into a coma. Yeah, he went into a coma, didn't he? They kicked him into a coma and just before he, just before he collapsed, he said, it was because they'd all been talking to us beforehand, all these skinners. There's a little war going out there with someone called Palmer and another guy called Mohammed for the running of the country. The, the misdemeanors are going in that country, that they were in control, trying to get control of that. And just before he died, because the blokes was talking to us, just before he went oh, into a coma, he went, it was Courtney and his boys. <laughs> it's actually nothing to do with us. It's absolutely nothing, but we don't know that's been said. We don't know that's been said. We can't call poor little goose, and we're carrying on very holiday. He goes back to the same bar the next night, just me, him, my Jenny. kids, my wife, the babies. <laughs> God damn it. And I was walking up the stairs and going into Bobby's bar, and it was like um, this little Moroccan guy with curly hair. Like Marco? Yeah, yeah. I think. And um, three guys with him who was like twice his height. And they just start. well, he started talking to them in his language. And I knew something was wrong. Dave had already walked upstairs with the babysitter and the kids and Jen. So I took double steps upstairs and turned around, thinking, um, all right, something's going to go off here. And as they come up, I'll start kicking. And the guy kind of moved his hand. As he moved his hand, I knew what he was going for. So I started backing up from the stairs, and he pulled out a gun. And he started saying to me, get on the floor, get on the floor. And at this point, Dave hadn't seen what was going on. And um, I thought, fucking hell, this is proper serious. So I looked at him, looked at him and I thought, no, nah. I shook my head and I said, no, nah, I ain't getting on the floor. He let off shot off. Which sort of woke me up a little bit. <laughs> sort of woke me up a little bit. Got me involved in the situation, right? And he was going, a life, a life, a life, a life, right? Meaning, gonna kneel him down on the floor, my Seymour, right? Kneel him down in front of me, is what they thought he was going to do. Kneel him down the floor and shoot him. Right? A life for a life. He's in another country and all that. And, I, and when that, anyone does pull a firearm out on you, God forbid it ever happens to anyone, but the first thing that goes in your head is, is it real? The next thing that goes in your head is, would he actually use it? Right? Well, all of that was, all the questions were answered. In one finger, he started going, ah, <coughs> shooting on the floor, and the carpet was all <laughs> And he's like, no, no. So the three blokes have grabbed him, they're getting hold of him, like, trying to drag him down on the floor. So as he took a shot at me, because I was walking towards him, he took a shot at me. I don't know why I did that. I just sort of turned me back. It would have still hurt me anyway, but I sort of went, ugh. And in front of me was my missus, and, and Jensen, and the kids, and a babysitter. And, as I, and I'm looking at her as close as I am to you. I said, I've got to go and get him tonight. And she went, yeah, you have. I said, I really love you, right? And I turned around and I ran at this man with a gun. Now, I know that sounds um, heroic or untrue, but that's actually what happened. Which is why I don't did. like telling the story myself. Right? Yeah, he did. He saved my life that, that night. He did. He ran at the guy with the gun and ended up getting um, pistol whipped. I see that out the corner of my eye, just as my I, head I thought, I don't know. <laughs> it might have been a brandy, I don't know, but I thought, oh, I could actually reach that, right? But I was about two foot out, and I ran towards him, and I went, ah, grabbed, missed. <laughs> so I'm on the floor, he said, I will kill you, I will kill you. And I'm looking over, and I can see the three blokes still trying to fight him and drag him down a the stairs the step the back, to an alley. To, the, to the, um, the back of the beach, isn't it? Mm. So um, I'm trying to fight with these three guys as best as I can. 
And uh, all the time I can hear Dave having it with the gunman going, you ain't gonna fucking shoot me, you've shot the floor twice. You hit me on the head of it, right? You ain't gonna shoot me because you can shoot me if you wanted to. That's what was in my head. He shot him, he's going, stay still, stand there, Mr. Courtney. I'll shoot it, <coughs> shot on the floor. And when I run to grab it, he hit me on the head. I thought, well, he, in my own head, I've analysed it as he, he's not going to kill me because he shot the floor twice and now he's hit me on the head of it. You're supposed to shoot me with it, you know what I mean? So I just said that to him, you are not going to shoot me. No, you ain't going to shoot me. And no, you ain't going to shoot him. So I continually tried to get the gun off of this bloke, which. It, it frightened them a bit. Well, that, that continually trying to get the gun off of the geezer actually saved my life because I feel like I was the target that <laughs> night because he kept saying to him, Dave, stay back, I'm going to kill you. And he's going, no, you're not. And so I thought, fucking hell, why did I have to get on the floor? <laughs> so anyway, I'm fucking, I'm fighting with these guys and, and it's not like the, the normal Barbara, right? When I say I'm fighting, I'm fucking trying to soften the blows as they hit me because they're coming from all angles, sort of thing. So <laughs> anyway, the, what's your, his description of it, he goes, I strategically went into the fetus position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's cool. So um, after my de defensive tactics, <laughs> I ended up with um, six stitches across my eye up there. But that weren't the end of it. We actually, I actually got kicked off of the stairs into the like back of the alley where the beach is. Proper kick it was, landed me right in the chest. And as I was on the floor, I could still see and hear Dave coming down the stairs. And I am trying to defend myself, but not trying to look too good because there is a gun on the manor, yeah? So anyway, <laughs> um, I've decided I've had enough because I'm getting battered on the floor now. So I've grabbed this geezer in the waist of his trousers and I'm just about to pull myself up. And there's Dave again, following the guy down the stairs and the guy's backing off going, Dave! And I thought, fuck it, hell. Oh. <laughs> Upon which he's run off. The guy who I'm holding has now pushed my head back and kicked me in the eye, hence me six stitches. And he's run off. So I thought, fuck it, oh, that was weird. Dave comes over to me, he's going, you all right? I said, yeah. He's put my leg on his, my head on his lap. He's asked for a bear, bear cloth. He's got a bottle of water. He's said, shut your eyes. He poured the water over my eye, because I had the cut there. And he put the bear mat on it and wiped it. And he goes, right, Seymour, look, it's like this. He said, your eyes cut and your lips a little bit fatter than it usually is. But I'm still better looking than you. <laughs> and at that specific time, I can honestly say, looking up into the night, looking at Dave's face, thinking of what we just gone through, I thought, how on earth can you crack jokes at this time? But it was really, really funny. And I started to laugh. I was laughing on his lap. And he said, right, Seymour, this is a crack. Get up and let's walk up the strip and get to the motor. So I said, all right then. So I put me hair in front of me, cut. And we walked up to the car with back Jenny. Up the, back up the stairs, through the nightclub that all this had just happened in. And he was, he, I didn't know that he was doing it all in one breath. He'd had to go... <laughs> get to the car, <laughs> open the door, and then fall into the <laughs> Because that is literally what I did. Because as we walked up the strip, you got to imagine, we've just been in a fight, in a nightclub, with a gun, but then everyone's run off, and then me and Dave's actually walking back to our car. So everyone's kind of confused. What's gone on? How did that happen? And someone's supposed to be calling an ambulance. So anyway, off we go to the space cruiser. And as I sat in it, all the wind come out of me. I was like that. <sighs> Deflated. And Dave goes, right, we're going to the hospital. All the girls, all the girls. Dave. Everyone, yeah, everyone started crying. And Dave's going to him, shut up. What are you crying for? He's got a cut over his eye. Stop it. He could be dead. Uh, no, I actually put a bit of reality on. I said, yeah. listen, we just had a proper life-threatening situation happen here with five bad guys. You don't have a country. They had a gun, and all you've got is a cut over your eye. That's a fucking touch, you know what I mean? Yeah. What are you crying about, right? <laughs> no, I looked at it as a win. Yeah. Right? And we then went to the hospital, and what we didn't know is the kid was in. The kid was actually the son or the, the nephew of, of this big boss, and they was all in hospital sitting around his bedside, and they actually looking out of his window while he's his kid's in a coma and they see Dave Courtney pull up again outside the hospital with his right hand man and they think we've come to finish the job. So they've got on the phone like, mayday, mayday, mayday. They've got the whole A team out for us. So he's now gone in to get the stitches done. I was sitting in the car park with the kids and, and, and another Spanish bloke that was looking after us. And as if it was a, a, um, a Dirty Harry movie, all these black Mercedes pulled up, right? 
all these blokes go out with machine guns and everything. I'm thinking, fucking hell, I've got to change my library books. <laughs> Is that the time? Is that the time? The nurses are trying to push him through a window, aren't they? Yeah, they're saying to me, the nurses are saying to me, <laughs> how did you do your eye? So I said, I fell down the stairs. She said, oh, there are some very dangerous men outside from this island and they have your friend and they want you too. So I said, oh, and you know the Luther windows, they're like this, but they open like that and on slats. So you can pull the slat out, but it's only that big. She said, you can try to get through the window there. And I looked at her, I looked at the window, I thought, you're taking a piss. <laughs> so I walked back out with me stitches and me bandage on me eye. And what's happened that you don't know is they pulled up and said, ah, I've got big round holes in my forehead where he's got a gun and he's going, Poof, to my face, spitting on me, going, ah, put your English, you big spitting on I was going, oh, fuck. I couldn't even run away because I've got the wife and kids here, you understand what I mean? And I'm like, wow, and they're going, this is it, this is it. And then he's come ambling out, but it's only because he couldn't escape in there. All right? So he's come ambling out, so they've now grabbed all of, all of us. They've got us against the wall, and I've got my wife there, and my son is on the floor, Jensen, my son is on the floor like that with guns and all that. And so I said to the, to the, I said to the Spanish man that we were with, <laughs> I said, right, take the kids and walk away. Just take the kids and walk over there, all right? So he's going, no, Dave, what do you say? I stay here, Dave. I stay here, Dave. I die with you. <laughs> uh, and I went, listen, dickhead, I want to run away, <laughs> but my kids are here, so you walk the kids off, because I'm fucking running, you wanker. I'm not dying anywhere, right? I'm on the fucking run away, yo. I'm doing the Courtney <laughs> Battle Cry again, right? And he's giving it all that. I stay I a day with, with you. you. I went, you fucking die with like, I'm running, cunt. And I can't because my missing kids are, you walk my missing kids off, and I'm away. So then the police car, the police turned up. This was the scariest bit of the lot, wasn't it? Yeah. Free police the police cars. turned up. They didn't even put their guns away. They didn't put their guns away because they're all Muslims. They're so all the same gang. All like We're family, man. I looked at Dave and I went, "Oh, um, at this time, right? I had me back against the wall. We was pinned oh, no, to no, the no, wall the, like uh, this." What's the name? The, the space cruiser. No, it was a police first, isn't it? The police pulled up and I went to Dave. I said, "Dave, I ain't ever been so glad to see old Bill because there was like." A lot of people there, but they were all gangsters. Then they were all carrying guns. And they were all, I mean? all high-tempered Mediterranean. <laughs> <laughs> and all you like shoot you know, any second, or you know, you can look at an English man and see him going, and you more or less know when you're going to shoot him. But with that, with the, with the Mediterranean people, it's all like, and you think, oh fuck me, any minute now, any one of them just <laughs> Could, go, oh, boom, boom. Sorry. Well, right. So um, we was there, and there was quite a few of them there, and then three police cars pulled up. And they kept telling me and Dave to stop talking, and I'm going to Dave, oh, fucking ain't never been so glad to see old Bill in all my life. <laughs> and they all got out there, had their boots tucked in their trousers, and they started shaking hands, and they still showing each other their guns. And I looked at Dave, and I went, oh, fuck, that's bad. <laughs> right? The police, they, they're coming over and looking at us. Took our passports. Took our passports off give, of us. Give our names and addresses to, to, the, to the gangsters of what hotel we're in. We're just still sitting here. And I'm thinking, no. Nah. And then, this space cruiser pulled up, it was white, and all the windows were tinted. So I looked the at the space door cruiser, open. and the police have been there like 10, 15 minutes. And I looked at Dave, and I went, Dave, that don't look too good, does it? They're going to take me, us this, and dump us. They're going to take us away now, aren't they? They're just going to take us away and dump us. I said to him, listen. <laughs> that was good. I said, when they, when they were beating you up, I said, did they kick you around the legs? Said, How are your legs? He went, my legs are all right. I said, right, you fucking follow me. <laughs> you try and keep up with me. Because shooting someone is hard enough just getting a target. It's hard. You know, you think with a gun, someone's standing just over there, you, know, you, don't, you don't always get him, it's got up, but getting a moving target's harder. I do know that. So I said to him, if there's fuck all wrong with your legs, right, you follow me, because I'm off. Right? And then we, he ended up, I mean, it was so obvious what he was thinking, because he was on our knees anyway. He actually done it, you know that stance when you go, on your march, get set, and you actually done that. Like, you know, he, he, he's actually turned his knee down into a fucking Zola Bud thing. He was like, right on it. <laughs> I thought, I'm gonna, waiting, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fucking be hard to catch him up. He's like waiting for the geezer to go, ready? <laughs> Steady! <laughs> I was, man, I was poised. You know what I, was, what I, mean? I was hanging on your leg. I had no ideas, you know what I mean? Like, when you come out of this hospital, right, it was like, must have been 18 foot walls, like a prison. It's just a long drive. So you can't do nothing until you get to the end of the drive. And at the end of the drive, they'd blocked it all up. There was Mercedes, police cars, space cruisers. So. That was it until you made your break, you know what I mean? So I was like, now, 
Fuck it up. First of all, we ain't going come. nowhere. It was low. And it ended up, they threw us in the back of the van, nicked us. And for whatever reason it was, they've decided to keep him and let me go. Well, the people that kicked this man into a coma was an assortment of English, English skinheads. English white skinheads kicked this bloke into a coma, right? So they arrested him. Oh, <laughs> 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 fucking hell. <laughs> get, 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 get your head around that one. Fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> 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 Is everyone on this island colourblind? You know what I mean? <laughs> so they've let me go, but it's now, they've, they've kept it, the, the, the way the flights are into Tenerife, they, they only come on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This happened Thursday night, so I couldn't get any help to me <laughs> till Tuesday. And the only other help that we had with us was a bloke called um, Bulldog, who at the time this all was going on in the club with the guns and the shooting and all that. They rung him and said, Bulldog, Bulldog, listen, we are really in serious trouble. Dave and Seymour are in trouble at the club. There's gunshots going off. They need you now. He went, OK. That's <laughs> <laughs> what he done. OK, uh, OK, I'm on my way. Phone. Oh, uh, can I change my hotel, please? Thank you. And I didn't see him for five days. I, I didn't see him for five days. So there's my backup gone, you know what I mean? So I've got his wife, his wife, my wife, my kids, the babysitters, two guns. I've had to change villas, get his wife to live with me, change the villas because they they had our villas, and hide some. So I'm on holiday for two weeks. Still trying to do the holiday bit with the kids. Ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> Kiss me quick, yeah? While well, in blowy wind, fuck me. And then I had to go down to the court in the morning to see if he was going to get bail. Well, he didn't get bail, and I had to kick, because they were waiting outside to kill him. They were standing outside waiting to take him away, a life for a life, you know. And um, so I had to go, leave early, get the car into a, into a position where I could drive at the court doors, <laughs> Put one of them wicker basket things over the front window screen so it looked like I didn't want the sun to come in with two holes in it. I could fucking wank her away. So I went in the car park looking for these old wigs. Kiss me quick out on ice cream. Just kiss. A beretta and having a nice holiday. <laughs> weekend break. A weekend break with the Courtney's, you know what I mean? So I was sitting there waiting for it to come out. It took three days it was going on the court case. He still weren't getting bow. I'm still waiting in there. Anyway, then what happened was this, this Mohammed um, went, on, went on national TV, went on Sky TV and declared open warfare on the island publicly. Now, he said, if this is, a, if this is a, a sign of how things are going to go on, you know, I will do a life for a life. And you know, he declared warfare on, 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 on television. So on the fourth day, there was CNN, there was thousands <laughs> and thousands of newspaper people all so half saved us, you understand what I mean? And um, on the fourth, and on the fourth day, he <laughs> came to rest. <laughs> that he actually got, he actually got bail. I, I didn't know. I didn't know that I, who all these other people were. It was all reporters now. I didn't know. That. I just see loads of people with black things. <laughs> like, that's a bit blatant. They're walking up there with like fucking <laughs> violin cases, and like, I'm sure someone's got a bazooka on his head. <laughs> but through the little holes that I could see. <laughs> so I was sitting there going, vroom, vroom, vroom. the doors come open. I've had to go, I went and picked him up, and um, we got away. And the bottom line was, they actually found out in the four days that it was nothing to do with me. Um, Mohammed then paid for all the hospital, all the hospital um, charges and all that. Um, Palmer gave us all the money that we spent on legal fees. They said they were very, very sorry. And if ever we wanted to come back, <laughs> <laughs> if ever we wanted to come back, they would give us a proper holiday. Well, to be honest, Clacton looks fucking good at the moment. <laughs> the, chances, yeah, yeah. the chances of me and Seymour going to Tenerife are slim, yeah? Very, <laughs> very, very, very slim. slim. <laughs> so the situation dragged out a bit of bravery for me there, where by choice, um, there's not many people I would actually do that for. You know, everyone likes to think that they would stand in front of, the, of a bullet for their mate. But everyone likes to think they would. In reality, you know, there's not many people you would do it for, but he is someone that has um, stood beside me since I had a fringe <laughs> from time. <laughs> we used to share the same gel. <laughs> and for you, those of you out there that actually know about the gun laws in the crim criminal fraternity, right? when someone pulls a gun down on you, you know your friends ain't there. You know nobody ain't there. When it goes pop, everybody's gone. So when Same it went who? pop and Dave was there, trust me, 
I'm there for him for life. And for the people out there, you know what I mean. All right?